has died at the age of 83. His films included The Hustler, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, and The Color of Money. Newman was also a longtime anti-war, anti-nuclear, and women's rights activist. Paul Newman once said being named on Richard Nixon's enemies list was, quote, the highest single honor I've ever received. In 1969, he spoke out in favor of the moratorium to end the war in Vietnam. We're here to support one of the main themes of the moratorium, which is business as usual. Uh, we are actors, but I don't remember that anybody asked us to give up our citizenship papers when we became actors. And so we're here, obviously, as citizens, protesting what we feel is the tragedy of the Vietnamese War. So we are asking, respectfully, uh, that people just don't go to our films on November 14th. Paul Newman died at the age of 83 at his home in Connecticut. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. And welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. The House is set to vote today on a $700 billion emergency bailout plan for the financial industry. The proposed legislation was forged during a marathon negotiating session over the weekend between lawmakers from both parties and Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson. The 110-page bill would authorize Paulson to initiate what is likely to become the biggest government bailout in U.S. history, allowing him to spend up to $700 billion to relieve faltering banks and other firms of bad assets backed by home mortgages, which are falling into the closure, foreclosure at record rates. While the legislation creates multiple levels of congressional oversight, Paulson would be granted broad latitude to purchase any assets from any firms at any price and to assemble a team of individuals and institutions to manage them. The measure would also require federal officials to rein in excessive compensation for corporate executives who participate in the bailout. Money for the program would be released in segments, with the Treasury Secretary receiving $250 billion immediately. Paulson has said he expects to spend about $50 billion a month on the program. The Senate could take up the bill by Wednesday. The financial package looms as a final piece of business before lawmakers leave to campaign for the November elections. Just before this broadcast, I caught up with Democratic Congress member Dennis Kucinich of Ohio. He was just headed to the House floor. I asked him about his thoughts on the bailout plan. This is a copy of the bill, which will provide for a $700 billion bailout of Wall Street. Uh, it has provisions in it where it talks about helping homeowners, but when you read the fine print, you see it has language like uh, may instead of shall and encouraging instead of uh, mandating help for the millions of homeowners who are worried right now about whether they're going to lose their home. There's no help for them in this. Uh, so what we have here is a rescue plan that essentially uh, gives all the speculators a bailout and puts the bad debts in the custody of the government. The president of the uh, Dallas Federal Reserve Bank has said that uh, this plan could create a fiscal chasm, says that the problem isn't a tight monetary policy, it's the uh, reckless behavior of some of these investors who have uh, now found themselves in a position where a government bailout is going to help uh, reward their bad behavior. Is it any better than when it was first introduced by the Treasury Secretary, by Henry Paulson? Well, you, you know, that, that implies that you would accept the underlying premise. I reject the underlying premise that we needed this bill, and as a matter of fact, uh, that we're putting this up uh, before an adjournment in an election season shows that Congress is being put under extraordinary pressure to bail out Wall Street. We haven't looked at any alternatives, Amy. This is, you know, there, it isn't as though if you had a liquidity crisis that, you, uh, you know, a real one, that you'd start to look at all the alternatives. We haven't done that. We have, we have a bill here, a bill of more than 100 pages, that we haven't had a single hearing on the bill, you know, on the concept, yes, on uh, what Paulson and Bernanke asked for uh, initially. But, uh, you know, we, we need to have hearings on this. There's 400 economists and three Nobel Prize winning economists who said, whoa, wait a minute, uh, what are you doing? Why are you rushing this? Uh, you know, there's, there, this thing doesn't, doesn't smell right, frankly. What do you think has to happen right now? Well, you know, Congress get, better get ready with a plan B. If this thing goes down, 
uh, we need to find a way to help Wall Street pay for its own problems. You can do that with a 20.25 percent uh, stock transfer tax, cancellation of dividends. Uh, you know, make the shareholders and the investors have to have to pay for the funny business that was going on in Wall Street. Why make the taxpayers pay? You know, the the idea, the very underlying idea of this needs to be challenged. And frankly, there hasn't been enough of that going on. Well, what we have is a transfer of wealth, actually. It's a continuation of a transfer of wealth. This whole government's become nothing more than a big machine that transfers the wealth upwards with our tax policies, our energy policies, with its fiscal policies, with the war. All the wealth of the country goes from the, the pockets of the people into the hands of a few. This is a, a very dangerous moment. Uh, you know, this, this is the biggest amount of injection of capital by the government a single time since the, uh, since the New Deal. And frankly, uh, there's no trickle down here. There's just uh, rewarding bad behavior. It sounds like it was mainly the House Republicans who balked, who revolted on Friday. Uh, yet you and a number of your colleagues are joining them. Do you believe this will pass today? It's going to be a very close vote. And I don't see this as a partisan issue, by the way. I mean, in a way, the, to, to, the debate that tries to make it a partisan issue is a diversion. Uh, this is really uh, whether or not people will side with Main Street uh, in a struggle with Wall Street, because uh, you know th 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 this is not about uh, uh, left or right. This is about uh, up or down, and it's about the color green. And frankly, uh, Wall Street is uh, it has put itself on a trajectory. With uh, now we have almost a quadrillion, half a quadrillion dollars of derivatives that are out that are floating out there. Uh, people have said that if this is intended to be a fix, it's a joke. Uh, on one hand, on the other hand, who's paying for it? Uh, why are we rushing this? I, I don't. You know, I, everything about this, I think, is unacceptable. Congressman Kucinich, what happens if this doesn't pass? Well, that's exactly right. I mean, we need we need to be ready with Plan B, which helps uh, Wall Street uh, restrain some of this bad conduct, which immediately, you know puts uh, uh, looks at some of the issues of liquidity that have to do with the policies of the of the Fed. Uh, we had a, a, f a former head of the FDIC tell uh, a group of uh, congressmen yesterday uh, that the Bush administration has been going around the last few weeks actually uh, so tightening up uh, on the practices of banks that they're forcing them to have bigger reserves, which in a way would, you know, uh, kind of uh, create, help to create the kind of uh, tight money policies that we're saying we're trying to alleviate with this bill. Uh, so, you know, there, there's, there needs to be a deeper look at this. There's, there, it seems to me there's a, there's a possibility uh, that, uh, that this crisis uh, has a little bit of um, um, uh, manufacture to it. And, and that really concerns me, because we haven't had enough time to, uh, to look at this in an in-depth way, to analyze the impact of it on the economy, to see if it's going to do anything about a recession that we're obviously headed into, to see if it's going to handle uh, the underlying uh, concerns on Wall Street about uh, the, the, the speculation and the lack of regulation. The bill doesn't, by the way, address anything about the speculation, anything about the lack of regulation. Uh, the SEC has failed, the Fed's failed, and we're essentially telling all the same actors, go for it, uh, you know, here's another uh, opportunity, except this time it's with taxpayers' money. We'll come back to Democratic Congress member Dennis Kucinich after break.